Hello, this is Vern, and if you keep falling for guys who appear to be aligned and compatible, and even tell yourself, he has everything I'm looking for, but to your surprise, you keep getting heartbroken and greatly disappointed, in today's video, I'm gonna share why this happens, and better yet, what you can do starting today to ensure it never happens again. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, I'm gonna talk to you right now about how to avoid being pulled by the strings of a guy who is toxic or who is manipulative in nature. And the first thing I'd like to share is that you want to be kind with yourself because as much as you're a smart woman who understands the world, you might still get sucked into one of the situations. And what I'm talking about right now is not a blatant guy who is being excessively jealous or maybe very controlling or someone who has anger management issues. And, and you can identify that typically from a distance or heavily narcissistic. Now, you might fall for someone like that, but the likelihood is smaller than that you'll fall for someone who is toxic in a way that is not healthy for you, even if the guy is well-intentioned, even if he's not sure that he's toxic. So the depth of the conversation right now is I want to go through specific stages in your connection with him that if you're not aware of, can suck you into a dynamic that will break your heart, get your hopes up, and make you feel less than you can be and endlessly push away the love that's really yours for the taking. Now, I'm gonna divide this video into sections. The first section is where I'll explain the specific stage and what you need to be aware of so that it doesn't happen to you. In the second part of the video, I'll share a three-step framework for how you can ensure this doesn't happen and go beyond just your head and into the actions that will make sure that you're toxic proof in your connection with men. Now, before I share my steps with you, if you want to understand how you can attract a conscious man and go beyond the contents of this video, I've created a training for you that you can access for free. If you click the first link under the description of this video, you'll see a page that looks like this. If you enter your name and email, you can start watching that free training right away. The first stage that many women are unaware of that's taking place that make you enter a toxic and manipulative relationship without you being aware of it is ambiguity. And here's what I mean. When you connect with a man who is not sure about what he wants, but you are, when you know you're looking for a deep, meaningful relationship that ends up in life partnership, whether that is marriage or not, but you want that depth of connection and you want that level of commitment in monogamy, and he's not really clear about what he's looking for, there's a mismatch in energies. So the first stage is where you ask the guy, hey, what are you looking for? And he's not really sure about it. And you say, you know what? I'm going to invest in this guy because the connection is strong. I feel he's a high quality man. And even though he doesn't know what he wants, things will play out for me. So many women fall for this trick and end up connecting with someone who all he really wants, if he's honest with you, is to spend some time, is to get to connect with you, is to have sex with you perhaps, but not really heavily invest in the pursuit of something that you find meaningful. So the signs that the guy is of this type is where A, he, you ask him the question what he's looking for and he says something ambiguous or he doesn't want to share it with you or he shares that he wants something deep but his actions don't reflect it. That's the first step that gets women in trouble. The second stage uh, of the connection with guys that get women into unhealthy, toxic relationships is where the law of familiarity, and here's what, how it works. If you don't know this guy really well, but he starts acting like he knows you well, maybe the frequency of connection is too much for the beginning. Maybe the way he talks to you, the closeness of his connection with you is as if he actually knew you, but he doesn't know you. Maybe he puts his hand on your leg very early on and you feel it's a little weird, but he's acting like it's all normal. He's, his level of confidence tells you that that's the right thing to do. So you start doubting yourself. Are you being too uptight? Are you being too weird? Are you being too picky? Or is he maybe moving really fast in the direction of creating this false sense of intimacy? Maybe he wants to introduce you to friends really early on and family without you really having developed the space to do that. 
Maybe he wants you to get off the dating app the first time you connect because the connection is strong. He might even tell you, I feel like I've known you for my entire life. I feel like, where have you been all my life? These little subtle clues that guys start dropping, if it's something pretty scaled down, then maybe not a huge deal, but if he's actually moving forward really quickly, both in his level of intimacy with you and you haven't really earned that together, that's a clue that this might be leading towards something toxic. And the reason why that can happen is because if you start falling for it, if you start really feeling like he's closer to you and he's more familiar to you than he really is, you connect with him multiple times really quickly, even though you should be pacing yourself more, then you can fall for someone based on a false sense of intimacy. The next thing that happens, which is close to the second one I just mentioned, is when the guy uses excessive praise and excessive, sometimes love bombing. Love bombing is a specific term that uh, narcissists deploy as a technique to get you to feel a stronger sense of connection. But guys who are not narcissists and who are not, by the definition of the book, love bombing you can still be sharing praise in a way that creates a false sense of he knows you already. And because you may have been starved for this type of connection, for this type of validation, when somebody says those things to you, the tendency isn't to say, wow, I wonder if this guy really knows this or if he's just blatantly <laughs> telling me what I want to hear so I feel connected to him. If you don't know him, if it feels and sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The thing that makes it not too good to be true is sustainability, is pacing, is you start slow and you continue getting stronger and stronger. When somebody starts really strong telling you you're the most amazing woman he's ever met and it's date number one, <laughs> when he says that you are such and such, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're incredible, you're so unique, you're so special, and he hasn't invested enough time to really be able to say that in a way that makes sense, that has some sustenance. If it's a table without legs, then if you're starved, even if you're not aware of this, if you're starved for connection, if you're starved for praise, then you will feel closer to him. You will start feeling like you need him. He's going to start taking over that feeling of intensity that you, you could be generating by self-validating yourself or by doing things that are intensely powerful in other areas of your life and start feeling like the guy is closer to you than he really is, than he's better than he really is, and you might overlook some red flags because your heart wants to continue feeling that display of affection, that display of it's over the top. And if you're starved for something, then it may not feel over the top for you. The next one is something that's highly toxic and it typically takes place if the guy doesn't really have the intention or the sustainability to take it all the way, then what he will do at some point, because he can't continue excessively praising you and, and, and doing all the grandiose actions that he's doing at the beginning long term, if he doesn't really want something sustainable, he's going to do the flip on you. And the flip on you means he's going to reverse his praise on you. One day the praise will stop. The five messages you used to get throughout the day will become one or zero. And the worst part about it is when you confront him about it, when you say something feels off, are you okay? He'll say everything's great. Nothing's taking place. Nothing's like, I am me. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So he, at that moment, whether he's conscious of it or not, is playing a game hot, called hot and cold. This is why casinos always win. There's a formula that casinos use to make you win enough times a little bit to where you actually want to put more money into the slot. Because if you lost every single time, then at some point you would say, I'm out. But if you win a little bit, it gives you just enough to want to continue putting money and the house always wins. So when a guy gives you a lot of energy and praise and then he stops, the natural thing for you to do, if you're not aware of this, is to start pursuing him. Is to start feeling like you need him. Is to start saying, I'm going to hold my breath until this guy shows up. Maybe you stop uh, doing things with your friends in the weekends in hopes that he wants to uh, connect with you. So maybe you stop connecting with people you love and you're just holding your breath, metaphorically speaking, for this guy to do something and he doesn't. Whenever you catch yourself in a situation where a guy started really intense, he can't sustain it, he starts playing that cold game and he's not even sharing why, he's not being transparent about it, he's just saying things are cool, that's a clear sign that you're about to lose your heart in the process and a sign for stopping and more about how to do the change in a second. The next one, and the last one of the five stages that get intelligent, nuanced, brilliant women into situations that are toxic and manipulative with men is the boomerang. And the boomerang is where he's earned enough, he's invested enough in you and really has you and has your heart 
uh, but like a marionette <laughs> on a thread because now you need him. Now you feel like he's the greatest guy in the world because he knows you so well. After all, he just said you're intelligent, smart, beautiful. He's seeing you in a way that you feel no one has seen you. Even if he's projecting, even if he doesn't really see it, but he's just saying what he needs to say to get a closer connection with you. You're not setting a high value boundary is that you're super needy. Maybe he starts acting weird with his phone all of a sudden. And instead of being clear about it, uh, you're the one who's jealous and insecure. He's not being weird, you're insecure. Whenever he starts gaslighting you and turning it down on you, whenever you know something's off but he keeps reminding you that it's your fault, that you're the crazy one, that you're imagining things, then it's gone too far. So that's where my three steps, <laughs> what to do when you catch yourself, <laughs> matter. So the best defense around this is detection, obviously, right? Uh, it's like cancer. If you notice something weird, go to the doctor. Don't wait until three years later there's something that's grown <laughs> to a disproportionate uh, tumor. If you catch something feeling weird and start off by the number one, if he's ambiguous about it from the start or he seems to want something that feels too good to be true and the actions haven't shown it, make sure to recognize it and stop. Take a deep breath. If you need to stop seeing him for a little bit, do that. If you need to talk to a friend, Talk to a friend. If you need to do more exercise so that your brain can be clear, do that. Get some distance from the situation so you can be more objective. Step number two is set a boundary. So at the beginning, for example, if you're connecting with a guy that you feel chemistry is strong, but he's being ambiguous about what he wants or he's not being clear or transparent with you, then the boundary would be, hey, I feel strong connection with you and at this specific stage in my life, I'm looking for something that's meaningful, long-lasting and ends up in marriage. And right now, it seems like you're not sure that you want that. So how about this? I'm going to, for right now, stop connecting with you. And if you decide that that's something that you want later on, please search for me, look for me. If I'm still single, I'll be the first one to want to connect with you. And if that's not the case, then, then cool, that's cool too. So that's a boundary, right? A boundary if a guy is being excessive in his familiarity. He wants to see you many times the first week instead of pacing himself and building it. Or maybe he's saying, hey, you're the most incredible human being, like number three, excessive praise. You're the most amazing woman I've ever met is that you say, hey, you know what? I feel, pre I mean, I feel validated. I thank you so much for seeing that in me. And I'm someone who takes a little longer to feel that way about someone. And actually for me, it means even more when there's more emotional connection and where you've known me better when you say that. So it's not that I'm not excited, is that I want to build something that takes a little more time. And for me, that type of I love you takes more time to build up. Whenever you can state a boundary, it doesn't mean that the guy will step up and say, hey, I wanna play by your rules, but if he doesn't, then no need to continue connecting. Set a boundary with kindness, but set it firmly. The third situation, the third step is you need to create more options. Doing this, recognizing and stopping and setting a boundary are gonna be far easier for you if from the beginning you're dating on exclusively, right? If the guy wants to take it really fast and say, hey, let's get off the apps and you say, you know what? Actually, I don't do that right now. Once I feel there's a strong connection and I've invested enough in a guy, he's invested enough in me and we've gone the distance for a little bit of time, then I'm far more likely to do that. But right now it's too early for me. It's gonna be easier for you to move forward, to set a boundary when the guy in question, the guy we're talking about right now, is one of a few guys you're dating versus your only choice. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. If it is, and you want to take this further and understand how you can start attracting more of this conscious man I'm talking about, make sure to hit the first link under the description of this video so you can watch my free training. If you enjoyed this video, please click like or thumbs up. That's how more people get to view this content. Subscribe to my channel. And uh, last but not least, if you want to go deeper than we can on this video format, if you understand that this process is more challenging in action than what we're talking about right now, and you want my hand holding and help, Second link in the description of this video will allow you to connect with me and if we're a fit, I can help you, hold you by the hand personally as you go through this process. Thank you so much for connecting with me. As always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.